Do eBay sales got you down today? Does somebody have a case of the Mondays? Join us today as we talk about <laughs> how to survive a bad month selling on eBay. Welcome to the Prof Sales YouTube channel. I am Prof Sales. And I'm Just Ask Karen. And we are glad you're here. This channel, we talk about being in business for yourself, being a, re a reseller on e-commerce platforms like eBay and Amazon, maintaining a positive community here in our little section of YouTube, and just having a great community around um, these topics, reselling and so on. And so on and so on. Hello, everyone. Welcome. <clears throat> so if you're here live with us in the moment, we have a live chat going on, which you'll be able to see afterwards. And we usually come on at 2 o'clock, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Eastern Standard Time. But if not, please leave us a question or comment after this um, video post, and we would love to hear from you. Yeah, I was totally going to put in the bumper the thing about being fired up today because in our <coughs> Facebook group, uh, Jason got ahead of me on the Monday morning motivation uh, and just posted. First. It is actually because usually I'm way, way ahead of that and all over it. But you posted something really simple like, you know, it's Monday. Who's fired up? Right. And we've gotten some pretty cool responses. Yep. Bing! Mine especially. That was my fire. Pew, pew. Like you look kind of like Spider Man. You sort of did I'm, that. Yeah, I'm doing that too. So I'm <coughs> like spider webbing the fire. Spider girl, spider woman. Yeah. Spider something. So, and that kind of spawned uh, today's topic. Like, what do you do when things just don't go the way you think they should go? Right. And before we jump into it, I just want to ask everyone watching to do one thing this is your call to action. You're gonna see down below this player a little button that says share. Um, I would like for you to please click that button and share this video with somebody that you think needs it. Share it on your social media platforms. It'll pop up with a whole bunch of options that where you can share it and we would love for you to share it to somebody maybe who needs to hear it, somebody who needs to see it and we truly, truly appreciate it. And thank you for supporting the channel. Do you know what face that was? What? That was my <laughs> share face. You know, my your share. share fate? I don't even know what that means. C H E R, but you're talking about S H A R E, right? Share. Oh, yeah. So that makes me mm -hmm. sunny. I feel kind of sunny. I got a glare. Uh, that was weird. But anyway, so let's let's jump into this topic. Because <laughs> you know our we're opening our opening monologue is falling. Three minutes flat, in and obviously. we're already off the Woo! rails. Here we go. Um, so you know, a lot, we talked the other day about what, like, why is eBay so hard? And I think that video, which if you haven't checked it out, we post on Friday, check it out. It's here on the channel. It's the most recent video right before this one. And we talked about why is eBay so hard? And I think the topic today ties into that sort of mindset, that sort of vein of videos. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it does. And in true Prof and Karin fashion, um, we're going to kind of challenge you guys to look at it a different way, right? That's what we do. We challenge you. Right. And, you know, one of the first things that I said, um, you challenge me for sure. <laughs> Let's be clear. Um, but one of the things that we always like to do when we get started is to define our terms, right? Yes. So we, you know, I, I don't know how you guys think about your eBay business, but I like to look at it on a monthly basis because I think if you look at it daily or even weekly or hourly, it will drive you nuts. I mean, it's like watching your stock on the stock market, you know, doing this. Mm -hmm. So I like to kind of look at a month at a time and then reflect back and then you can even break it into quarters and years, whatever you want to do. But I think that gives you enough time to sort of have some perspective on, you know, what went right, what went not so right. But I wanted to define a bad month. And I'd love to hear from you guys in the chat. And if you're watching later as well, how would you define a bad month on eBay? What would you, if someone said, hey, did you have a good month or a bad month on eBay? And you thought you had a bad month, what would be part of your definition? Mm -hmm. I think that's important, right? Because not, we're not all going to agree, but we, we came up with some things that Karn and I were kicking around, like some things that we've heard, some things that we've experienced about what defines a bad, defines a bad month selling on the platform. Um, so let's talk about the first one. The first one is kind of about achieving your uh, transactional goals. And what I mean by that is the things that you have in your control. Did you achieve your goals in terms of how much you sourced, how many things you listed, how many photos you took, 
those sorts of things that <clears throat> you may you may or may not set those on a monthly basis, but even if you don't write them down or type them out, I promise you, you have those goals. You just may not have them formally called that. Right. I thought you were going to say something. No, I'm just ready to do my number two. Yeah. So that's the first thing I would say is about, you know, might define a bad month. Might you, you might look back and say, you know, last month I really wanted to list 50 items and I only listed 30. So I don't feel like I, I had a very good month when it came to listing items or I was going to go source a hundred things and I only had, to, you know, I only got to source 40, whatever the number was. And by the way, if you're not kind of tracking that stuff, you should on mm -hmm. some level, you should have some sort of expectation because that's in your control. Like it's in your control, how much you source, how much you list, how much you photograph. Those things are in your control. So I would highly recommend having goals around those. Well, and it's interesting. You said something interesting. Um, you, you said feel <clears throat> like how you feel about something. Right. And I think that our how we gauge our own success, like there's the real black and white, the numbers part of it. Like, did we right. make the money? Did we sell the things? Whatever. But then there's those other those other things. How do we feel about our success or <clears throat> our progress or our failure or our effort? Right. Yep. So we have this sort of self-imposed meter um, that affects us as well. And we're going to sure. talk more about that later. Sure. Um, but you're absolutely right. Like good, bad, successful, not successful has to do with all those things. You want to go to number two? I do. Let's just go right to number two. Um, maybe uh, your bad uh, is reflected in the fact that your sales were not what you expected. Maybe your totals were lower. Uh money wise maybe you sold less items than you thought you should have and maybe even the profit that you made was not quite what you thought it should be as well yeah and i think a lot of people would i mean i think most sellers on ebay especially if you're doing this on more than just a very hobbyish part-time-ish basis and even there i mean we look at that final number mm -hmm. for the month yep we also look, at least I hope you do, at like how many items you sold. Like that's important um, because, you know, you can, you know, objectively, if you're selling more items per month than you did the month before, um, then you probably are going to make more money, assuming the same cost of goods and the same average mm -hmm. selling price and so on. So you're going to see some growth. But um, if you're not tracking kind of how many items you sold, you won't know that. And eBay gives you all those numbers. I mean, it's, it's all right there for you. You can record it or not. And then did you make enough money on it? Was it worth it? What you, the effort you had to put in versus what you got out and profit is something we can talk about for days in lots of different ways and so on. But ultimately profit, I define it as, you know, your sales minus your cost of goods minus your expenses. Mm -hmm. You still have tax liability, but that's different for everyone based on your given situation, whether you're part-time, whether you're a proprietor or a corporation. So we're not going to get into that. But what was your profit in terms of what you expected for the month? You're like, I'm, I'm hoping to make $500 profit this month. And you made 600. You exceeded your, your objective, you know, or maybe you only made 350. It's like, you know, all right, I didn't, I didn't quite get there. So I think it's all those things and probably more. Um, somebody said they had the best day ever yesterday and we Aww. helped them. Oh, Congra that's very nice. Congrats, Trish. That's wonderful. You'll have to elaborate on what made it the best day ever, <clears throat> but good for you. That's awesome. Way to go. A successful day starts on this side of the dirt. I think he means uh, above it. Yes. I would assume. Yeah, there's yes. definitely some truth to that. Um, <clears throat> all right. Number three. Uh, that's you. Defining a bad month. This is, you had too many returns. Mm -hmm. You had all kinds of issues with your customers. And the buyers that you had were high maintenance and very time consuming to deal with. Oh, preach. Mm -hmm. That was you. <laughs> she came up with all of that one mm -hmm. from start to finish. Did you not? You did. Well, sure. Because your good month could be that you sold a hundred of the things um, but maybe you got back 101, you know, I wouldn't wish that <laughs> on anybody, but you know what I mean? That's a lot of returns. Like, but yeah, but sometimes we go, it's sort of this ebb and flow, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we go through a period or a season where everything's rosy. Um, and then the next month, 
Um, maybe it's not. And maybe we got our first return or maybe we got our first INAD. See, we didn't even put that on there. Mm. INAD, item True. not as described, right? Um, but that's just a, a piece of the puzzle. It's just one season out of the year. It's just one, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't, in that moment, that doesn't necessarily make or break you. Although it doesn't always feel that way in the moment once we get through it, right? But that could certainly make for not a good month because all these other things are happening. And you know, I virtual show of hands here, watching or afterwards, how many of you resellers out there think you should never get a return? Be honest, because I see enough people in some of these groups and on these channels who at least give the impression that they think they should never get a return. They always did everything perfectly. The buyer should be 100% satisfied and there should nothing should ever come back across their, their doorstep. That's just not reality. Returns in this business are just a part of it. You're going to have to deal with them. You're going to have to deal with them. I, I, when I even hear a term legitimate returns, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> like when I go to, if I bought something at Best Buy and decided to return it, or I bought something at the grocery mm -hmm. store, you know, suppose I bought something at the grocery store and it was, you know, a steak and I went to open it up and it smelled funny. We would not eat it. I don't care what that date says. If it doesn't smell right, probably not going to taste right. And you're probably not going to feel right after you eat it. So I'm going to take it back. The grocery store is probably going to look at me and say, this guy probably left it sitting out. He doesn't know what he's talking about. This is a, and they're going to take a loss on it. Potentially, you know, mm -hmm. you can return things to the grocery store. People don't usually do it too often, but was that a legitimate return or not? From their perspective, maybe it wasn't, but for mine, it was absolutely legitimate, you know, mm -hmm. and that's the problem guys, like your sellers, your buyers out there, they're going to return things to you and you're going to think that it's not legitimate. And sometimes it's perfectly legitimate. Mm -hmm. They just don't want it. It didn't work. You, you did everything right. They did everything right. And it just wasn't right. So that's just part of it. Um, but I do hear people say that and it kind of makes me chuckle. There's not legitimate <laughs> returns or illegitimate returns or just returns. And you can just, you decide how you want to code them, but it doesn't matter. You got to deal with them. illegitimate returns, illegitimate, illegitimate, legitimate returns. There's something to think about. A return without a father. You're not my father. Number four is, oh, I think it's me. Yeah. Is uh, the number four way you might define a bad month is you have, this is kind of the mental stuff and the personal stuff. Maybe you had a month where you really lacked motivation. Right. Maybe you're coming off of um, a month of excessive in your mind returns, or you're coming off of a month where things didn't go how you thought they should. Or maybe you're just having a crappy day or a crappy week or whatever. Um, I think that a bad month, a bad season, a bad time um, could be because of your own uh, lack of motivation, right? If you get down in the, in the, dregs of it and you get affected and just all of that weight just keeps piling, keeps piling. That's, I mean, where's your, where's your sunshine people your when sun that happens? Oh, that's good. <clears throat> no, you're absolutely right. And you know, having those family issues as personal issues and so on, we all deal with those and they will definitely cascade over and spill over into your, your eBay business. They'll spill over in everything. Um, you know, there's some things I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday after uh, Alex, you know, Alex. Mm -hmm. And I told him, you know, he was, he had somebody at work who was really just a nasty person to everyone who works there, like cursed them and got in their face when they made a mistake. This wasn't even a manager. It was just another employee. And he even did it to Alex. And Alex is like the most mild manner, unassuming, soft-spoken, super nice guy that you would ever meet. And it's just very difficult for me to believe that somebody could be standing in his face and dropping F-bombs at Alex for any legitimate reason. Um, so mm -hmm. I told him, I said, you know, life is short, man. And if you keep staying in that place, yeah, that environment is going to spill over into your marriage. It's going to spill over into your relationships with other people. It's going to spill over to everything. I mean, you're not immune. Um, and, you know, you need to kind of think about that before you, and he, you know, he, he knows he needs to kind of figure out what it's going to look like going forward. And sorry if I just got you in trouble at work, Alex, but what are the chances they're watching? They're probably not watching. <laughs> <clears throat> and they don't know which Alex. So, um, but ultimately you have to realize that, you know, those sorts of things are going to make you perceive your month on eBay or wherever, maybe worse than they really are. 
just well, because you're unhappy. And let me jump right on Robin's comment. Um, just starting a part-time job and learning how to balance. You used one of our favorite go-tos, right? The word balance. How important is it to, to seek it out and find it, try to maintain it, but then how often are we out of balance <clears throat> on all of the thingies Thank you, Adam. Um, right. But, you know, like, and, and this and this finding for Robin, this finding balance is, you know, probably going to make for a bad month right now. Maybe mm -hmm. because you're you're looking for that balance. You're you're finding your new groove. You're you're adapting to a new schedule. You're learning new things. <clears throat> well, I find too, Robin, to your point, and that ties into this this concept that when most people say balance, what they really want is a way to juggle it all. Mm -hmm. And the reality is most of us can't juggle it all. I would say no one can juggle it all. Multitasking is sort of a myth because you usually just end up doing a lot of things very averagely. I don't know if that's really a word. It is now. It averagely. is now. You heard it here first. You, you end up being pretty mediocre to all of them. And you think, well, I have to do all these things. But I question that. You usually don't have to do all those things. You've mm -hmm. chosen to make decisions mm -hmm. that has led you to believe you have to do all the things, but the easiest way to get your life in balance is to eliminate what's really not essential. I mean, there's a lot of great books and concepts out there about this idea of essentialism, like only focus on what's essential to mm -hmm. you and your happiness and your life and what you need out of it. And you'll be a lot, you'll be a lot more balanced because there'll be less to balance. If that makes sense. So drop anyway. that mic prof. All right, moving on. What are we doing here? So I, you, I think you put that in the wrong spot. But yeah, it could I'm, be further down. I, I, you want me to do it now or later? No, it could be further down. We'll talk okay. about it down there. Okay. So I'm going to ask you guys. Let's. We we're getting ready to go into um, May here in another week, and so April is going to be a time to look back and reflect on. So what was your plan for the month? You know, when you think about how your month went on selling. What was your plan? Did you have a plan? What did it look like? Did it have milestones? Did it have ways that you could track progress? Did it have, um, you know, it was specific. It wasn't just, you know, in certain areas and other areas, it has to be more general. You know, if you say things like, I wanted to um, list more items this month. Okay, list more items than what? Like that's a kind of a general <laughs> goal, but then you need to make it a little more specific and say, all right, well, more than maybe the month before. And so I listed 50 the month before I'm going to commit to listing 60 this month. I'm going to grow, you know, I'm going to grow or maybe just said, I'm just going to grow beyond what I did last month. Maybe you only did 51 this month. Congratulations. You grew. I mean, you grew and people get, you know, they get so caught up in the amount of growth and so on, but I don't want to jump ahead to our, how to survive here, <laughs> but you have to, you have to think about what was your plan for the month to know if you really succeeded or not. I mean, that's really the way I look at it. And I like to look back. It's probably my retail um, store management background. W everything in retail management is about comp store sales, what you did last year at that time frame. So I really like to look back at what I did in the month, that same month last year, because I feel like that's a more comparable comparison. Um, that's like a double positive. But than just saying, oh, what did I do last month? Because last month could have been weird. Like if you look at like what you did in January versus December, you might see a very skewed number. Like December might've mm -hmm. been great sales because it's the end of the fourth quarter, whereas January is eh, usually not quite as great. So I always like to look back, well, what did I do this December versus last December? What did I do this January versus last January? In all respects, in all respects, all sources of revenue, all sorts of effort level. I mean, I think to me, that's like the better way to sort of figure out, you know, what your plan is for a month. Plan to grow versus what you did last year in that same time frame. And and I think you'd be happier. Be specific. And remember, goals are measurable. I mean, you just said it. Like, I want to do better. I want to do more. Well, put a number to it. Remember when we when we tasked Ben with that mm -hmm. and he said he wants to do better in school or do better at life or whatever. And he got really, really annoyed. He's like, Ma, you can't, it's not all about the math. But turns out he's taking math. <laughs> turns out, um, <laughs> it's, I mean, so it's partly about the math. to measure something, and this is like, I don't want to get into a big argument with people about it because with the JCs, we would discuss this all the time when you make goals, but 
it, it to be measurable, you have to give a number to it, give a plan, a date, a something, so yeah. that you have some barometer to go back and well, one, it's a goal to something to aspire to, but two, you know, how do you assess? How do you uh, take a look at and g learn right. from? your experience right and i have to breathe life into uh something that somebody just said in the chat uh jerry says that sellers resellers were all professional problem solvers buyer problems are opportunities for us to become better sellers um sure if we're good at it yep. you know we say Agreed. all the time and and skip will will can't say this enough in our facebook group but it's always under promise over deliver right right and we have to if we're going to get better we have to learn from it and i do like that i really really like that quote yeah and going back to the for just a second to the the planning and so on my my goals for this year were growth which is very broad as a goal mm -hmm. and then i have areas where i want to grow so i can measure that by by looking at all right you know what kind of what kind of what kind of listings did i get up this year this time or last year this time and then did i grow it this year did I put out more video content? You know, I mean, I can see where the growth is. And so that was my specific part of, you know, kind of a big, broad goal because I didn't want to hem myself in too much and say, well, I'm going to hit exactly this number. That's a trap we get into. Like I'm going to, you know, and I was laughing when I hear that. I remember one reseller said at one point that they were going to double their sales next year. Great. But how, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that's, you know, doubling your sales is an awesome goal. And if your mm -hmm. sales were $1 and you want to double them to not hard. On the other hand, if they're a hundred thousand dollars and you want to double them to 200,000, that's a little tougher because when you get to those bigger levels, that kind of growth is much more difficult. So I'm like, you know, why not, you know, think about yeah. that in terms of like, you're going to double, that's probably going to require you to at least double everything you're doing at least maybe even triple mm -hmm. to get there. So, and um, I don't think they ended up making it. Well, and I, <laughs> so and I remember that's that. kind of a little ambitious. I'm like, eh, that might be a little too I far. I remember that. It's not enough to say, you know, I want to do more. Like I want right. to double, I don't want to double my sales. Okay. That's a goal, but you got to be able to back it up. You know, you can't just you can't wave, have a, plan for wave a wand. Right. Right. Which How is what is your plan? Right. Exactly. So, um, I, mean, I like you want to talk about that. One. Yeah, because um, it also when we we're speaking about some other stuff came up that your bad results when we're you remember how we defined our terms at the beginning of the video, your bad results are subjective and success is relative. And if you want to guarantee your failure at this, you're going to quit before you even get started. Right. So, again, your success is relative. It's relative to your effort, your mindset all of it yep absolutely i mean it's we talk about this you know playing the comparison game will mm -hmm. destroy any joy you have in this reselling game i promise you and, and i and i was giving you the example earlier i was like you know some people they might say how do you know how do you know you had a bad month on ebay and they said well i only did fifty thousand this month <laughs> well and because they normally do seventy five thousand. Whereas for most eBay sellers, that'd be like, that would be an amazing month, you know? Like, so it's relative to your own results, your own history. And that's why it's important to keep it in that context or otherwise you get into these weird comparisons and you're not the same seller as somebody else. You don't have the same situation, the same setup, the same advantages, the same disadvantages, the same opportunities, resources as they do. And you have a different set of those things. So you have to keep it relative to yourself and you're absolutely right when you said that. I was like, that is so true. It, it, your results are subjective and they only really matter to you. Right. And hashtag success is, what did I say? Relative. Relative. <laughs> Got to write that Aunt one down, uncle. I think. Uncle? Relative. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, you know, how many <coughs> of you guys talked yourself out of success? How, how, how many of you talked yourself into a failure by simply never getting started? Right, right. And I mean, I've done that in my life many times where I've thought, uh, I'm going to go do this. And then I think, but, and then I start coming up with like 17 reasons why it won't work. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, you've already defeated yourself before you even got started. Mm -hmm. You know, you already played the whole narrative out and it's over before we even began. So um, be very cautious about that. And that's talking yourself into that failure. Right. And chasing secrets <clears throat> is getting ahead of us. Um, 
So yeah, we're going to talk about in we're going to talk about that in the how to survive section. Yes, that's coming up. But before we do that, guys, uh, here is your call to action. I'm going to ask you to do. Um, you can like or dislike the video, but ultimately, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that little share button down below. There's a share button below the player, and it creates a link, and you can post that on social media. So please consider sharing this. Maybe with somebody you maybe on their Facebook page or wherever you want, Instagram, whatever. Well, you can't really share a link in Instagram, but um, wherever that kind of makes sense, somebody needs to hear. Um, I really appreciate it. And it just takes a moment to do. So please click the share button down below this player and uh, let the world know. All right. So how do we survive, Karin? How do we survive the, the how, eBay apocalypse? How do we survive any apocalypse? A ammo, guns and, ammo, uh, guns and <laughs> bottled water. Ammo, bottled water, and canned goods. All right. So no. <coughs> yes, yes. Yes, but no. Yes, but no. Um, for the eBay apocalypse, ooh, there's something there. So this is one thing that we can't say enough. Be proactive instead of reactive. Um, and this, the, this whole section comes from, you know, whatever it is, <clears throat> X happens, right? Because of whatever, like, you know, you don't sell enough, that happens. So why did that happen? Or you didn't have, you ran out of things to list or, or whatever. You have a choice in that moment, whatever your, whatever your immediate in your mind downfall or unsuccess is um, to be proactive or reactive. Um, and so many times we have these knee jerk reactions to things or more importantly, no reaction at all. Right. right. So whatever happens in your business and whatever m meter you're using, you have choices, right? You're going to be proactive or you're going to be reactive. You're going to be aggressive or you're going to be passive. So I think there's almost like a mindset to all of that, right? You're either going to be active in your business or you're not. Yeah. Did and you? I'm probably okay. jumping ahead. Yeah, you're getting a little um, bit on that one, but yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I'll back up a little bit, give you your, your time. No, no, space you're good. There. Keep going. Um, so I to be proactive, back. I would ask the questions, <laughs> what's your plan um, for obstacles? Like what kind of plan do you have in place for obstacles that will inevitably occur every month, every day even? you know, what to have a plan. Um, and here's, here's, here's a really good one. So if let's say something does happen, like you get a hurdle or a brick wall, maybe just smacks you in the face. Um, don't have a pity party. <laughs> if something totally unexpected happens, right? Uh, because it's not, it's a waste of your time and your time is valuable. Uh, so don't even waste a second on woe is me mentality. Totally agree. Where did you originally off? I'm not sure. Um, well, when something like that happens, um, that's where I left off. You got to be able to pivot, right? Ah, oh, gotcha. Maybe, um, and not to make light of any, you know, serious thing that happens, like there, you know, your sales are down or whatever, but there could also be some real life bad things that happen. You know, maybe your storage unit, uh, our, our warehouse roof, your garage floods, you know, heaven forbid. Um, to be proactive there, you probably could have put it on, you know, shelves with higher legs or something. Um, but when something sure. like that happens, if you haven't been proactive, don't beat yourself up over it, clean it up, dust yourself off and know better for next time. Right. Being independent, being um, self-employed, we also have to be able to pivot when personal tragedy occurs. Right. So if if someone. Uh, if there's a death in the family or an illness, um, you're also going to have to be able to pivot in that moment as well and have a plan uh, ahead of time um, for, you know, what do I do in that instance? Yeah. And I think along those lines, like say, you know, God forbid somebody passes away in your family and we take things like that that happen in a time frame and we apply them to other things. So we might say, well, oh, well, someone died this month in my family. And therefore I had a bad month on eBay. They really don't have anything to do with mm -hmm. each other. Those two ah, things, but, but how doing. you respond to said event probably is going to impact your, your performance and results down the road. Oh, sure. It's like going to work, you know, at a traditional nine to five job and you've got all this heavy emotional baggage on you. You're not going to perform at the same level. Like you're going to be snippy and have maybe a tough attitude with your coworkers and bosses. I mean, these things impact us. It's, we're not robots. So just realize that the two things don't really have anything to do with each other. And because you you're kind of projecting your problems in one area onto 
something else. Huh. We should have practiced that one because you just you brought up something that people do all the time. And we're not playing an insensitivity card here. No, no, no. But how often do you ask someone, you know, how's your day or how are your sales? And it's immediately an excuse, right? It's, oh, I had a death in the family or, oh, I was sick or, oh, I've been I can't get to it because I've been sick. Like I've been sick for Well, at some point you got to be not sick or at some point you have to just power through it. Right. One of the things you're absolutely right. And one of the things that I was talking to somebody about this the other day, and I said, one of the things that I'm trying to do it with my business going forward is figuring out ways to eliminate me, eliminate the bottleneck because what happens if I am not here? Mm -hmm. And that's the trouble with a lot of eBay sellers. We're very, your business is very dependent on you and that's great. But what happens when you are not available emotionally, mentally, physically, maybe you're sick, who knows? So you have to be thinking about that in terms of, all right, what are ways that, you know, if the worst of the worst happens, I can still maintain, you know, what I need from this business without it all falling apart just because I'm not available. Mm -hmm. So that's being proactive, I think too. Oh, sure. You know, so, um, all right, what are we, are we on the next You're one? You're number two. Uh, so Karin says you need to be, uh, here's another solution for you. You need to be aggressive instead of passive. No, we don't mean aggressive in terms of like angry or hurting things or people. Um, but I should have just done all of these, right? Cause I'm going to, I'm going to get on a soapbox like every single time I bet. Right. And you can, you can definitely tag on this one. If your sales are slow, as you said, mm -hmm. people just tend to complain. They tend to complain. Now, don't get me wrong. There is value in venting, quote unquote. But venting very quickly can turn into the said pity party, right. the endless loop of venting, the searching for affirmation from other people who think like you do. And, you know, you create this big echo chamber among you just to make yourself, quote unquote, feel better. Oh, well, look, it happened to them, too. But ultimately, guys, if your results are not what you need them to be, you got to be aggressive and quit complaining and take action. I don't know what that action is. It could be lots of different things. It could be things, re, you know, relating to your, your, your strategy, your pricing, your promotions, your sourcing strategy. Um, are you going to list on other platforms? Are you going to quit and do something different? I mean, all these things are, are very important if you have to take action. Sorry. So I didn't mean to like, but a drummer said it, right? Misery loves company. Oh like, yeah. Like we, we surround ourselves with negativity and guess what? we have this self perpetuating pity party. Right. And my whole like aggressive instead of passive where I, where I also wanted to go with that was that how many Adam, somebody help me out. What was the product, the set it and forget it, uh, rotisserie chicken cooker thing. What was that called? I, I like, I find myself wanting to say gerbil wheel, but no, no. What was the thing called where you just said <clears throat> it and forget it? Um, that's the kind of my point is this, it's the kind of attitude that some people get with, oh, I'll just list it and I'll put it out into the universe and then just sit back and wait to see what happens. And that's not good enough either. Mm -mm. You cannot, if you're going to be a successful entrepreneur, a successful business person in anything that you do. I know we talk about passive income. That's a whole different right, ball whole game, difference. folks. Right. But you cannot in business just set it and forget it. Was it the crock pot? I'm not sure. I thought it was that rotisserie thing that there was an infomercial for it. Just set it and forget it. Uh, the white thing and it did a chicken. Anyway, my point about that <laughs> don't is do that. that don't do it. <laughs> so you can't with eBay. I know it seems even if you do good till cancel GTC, I don't think you can just do good till cancel. I don't think you could just put something out into the universe. It's the Ronco. The ro yeah, Sue. Thank you. And Adam said it too. Yes. And now other people. We're all on the Ronco. Don't do the Ronco. Or the Ranco. That's a different Ranco, one. whatever. Rango was a cartoon. But you know, like you can't simply do the do the effort. And for some folks, it's minimal. You know, they just want to do it as much as they can to do it at a minimum. Mm -hmm. You just you can't do that. You can't set it and forget it. You can't just sit back, especially on an eBay business. And we talk about that. None of us know the complete 101% magic sauce, right? Nope. There is not one YouTuber, Nobody. one reseller, one anything -er that can tell you if you do this, this, and this, you will be an eBay mm -mm. goddess or God, nope. right? It just, it's not out there. So the general school of thought is that you can't 
Well, one, it's just good business practice. You just can't sit back and just wait for right. life to happen around right. you. That's when you get crushed. But the general <laughs> school of thought is that you put something out into the eBay universe. If it doesn't sell within a period of time, then you got to tweak it. You got to do sure. something about it. And at some point, you're going to have to let it go, let it go, right? Is this one you, number three? Uh, oh, I thought I'm talking about all the things. I guess so. Uh, so when you're not, when you're going to stop the complaining and the stop just sitting back and relaxing right. part, um, remember that eBay, selling on eBay, like a whole lot of other stuff, is a roller coaster, right? It's going to have its ups and downs. Sure. So in relationships, <clears throat> in business, in uh in gambling and stocks and all of the things, there's sort of an ebb and flow. And we mentioned that earlier today. Um, so eBay, you know, just by nature of it being consistent with everything else in life, there'll be ups and downs, right? Yeah. So expect it. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think a lot of us in the reseller community expect that as we increase our efforts, that our sales will, and our results will increase like in this straight linear progression right with them. Uh. And that's not what happens. Um, and it's not what happens for lots of reasons. It's not what happens for reasons we don't even know. It's not what happens for seasonality reasons. It's for how markets change. I mean, so many things go into it that it's not enough. I used to be in that camp that I thought, well, you know, if you have 500 listings and you double those to a thousand listings, your sales will double. But they don't necessarily. Sometimes they more than double. Sometimes they're less than double, but they're very, it's, they're very rarely like exactly double. So you have to remember that you're going to have this roller coaster based on all these other factors. And the, the quicker you realize that, the more comforting it is to realize that I know I'm implementing and doing my strategy. And though there are going to be some bumps in the road, overall, I'm where I need to be. <clears throat> and then you don't have to get so caught up in the ups and downs as much. Um, the fourth thing we have here is contingencies. Guys, eBay can go away tomorrow for all of us. They could literally go out of business at some point. It happens. Amazon could go out of business. I mean, we, we sit here and we see these, you know, these e-retailer behemoth, behemoths and these huge companies and so on. That was a tough word to say. Is that like a mammoth? Mammoth. Um, but um, it was a very... <laughs> it's a very tough word to say, but they go out of business from time to time. They downsize, they make mm -hmm. mistakes and you could be left holding the proverbial reselling back, right? All of a sudden the source of income, this full-time endeavor you're doing part-time, whatever is gone. So you need to, as we've talked about diversifying your income streams into other things. It's just smart. Like the days, the days of like with my parents case, of working 35, 40 years at one place mm -hmm. and then retiring with a great pension and bit, they're gone, like they're gone. And I don't know if they'll ever be back. So and you don't wanna put all your eggs in that one basket because it's just too risky for lots of reasons. So you need to diversify your income. Like we've, start, we've started doing that, other platforms, passive income, investments, selling locally. Um, these are just sort of in the reselling sort of realm other than investments somewhat but there's just ways that you can do it i don't know what those ways are for you but there's tons of information resources out there on how to diverse diversify your income stream so that you know if ebay goes poorly for more than just a month maybe a quarter maybe six months maybe a year and all of a sudden you know you've seen a 30 percent reduction in maybe your income mm -hmm. which can happen um then you need to have these other ways to take up the difference. Well, and part of having a contingency plan is not only the diversification, but um, somebody mentioned earlier in the chat and we said we'd come back to it, but <clears throat> have have an idea for, okay, if I'm not having to ship all the thingies this morning and you've blocked off a, a period of time for that, you know, work on some other part, like always be putting tools in your toolbox and honing the tools that you have. So use that time, pivot, uh, educate yourself, you know, research a new niche or get more Sweet. educated in the one you've already chosen to, to put yourself into, right? Yep. Like always, always be work, working towards whatever it is your success looks like to you. Right. So right. don't let like have, have a contingency, like just sort of, 
I think one of the things that could help is if you sort of take like a future look at worst case, best case, what it could look like. And what are some possible problems? Like what are some possible things that could happen in your business that would not be so good? They would probably lend themselves to a bad month or a bad week. And what happens if those things are to happen? Yep, so have, they will. have a contingency time, time. plan. So maybe <clears throat> you're relying really heavily on your eBay income. Um, you know, one of my contingencies right now, and it's actually not a I did it because it's you know fun, but it just so happens that my time subbing um, is more than paying for my car payment and my insurance payment right now, for <laughs> example. So that's a, that's kind it's that's not a good example, but you know doing something part time or doing something additional, um, babysit that's cash money, mow somebody's grass that's cash money. I mean, have a contingency for especially if you're relying on that income. Make make a contingency plan for the income if it ceases or if it gets really, really thin because right. the eBay uh, algorithm, eBay sales are up and down. And depending upon sure. what you're selling, that it's going to do better. Like there are there are things, of course, that do well all year round. But some things like maybe ski suits are going to do better when there's snow. Right. Not the best example, but just stay with me, people like different times of year. Different things sure. may have a big. Somebody peak, just said so. that in the chat. Yeah. Oh, so. really? I took my glasses off. I can't see a thing. So there you go. <laughs> I'm right here. I don't know why you keep looking over there. <laughs> yeah. Jason, where are you? Uh, really so that leads us to bad. our last one. Our last. And it's me, but I'll like read it and then you can just go on and on. Right. Okay. So understand <clears throat> and act on your why. Like we talk, you talk about the why all the time. Why the heck are you doing it? Yeah, why are, why are you doing this and does it still apply? Because this is a tough one to explain. But for me, I guess it's one of those things where I started with the why of I can't work for somebody else. Hmm. I mean, I can, but I don't want to for lots of reasons, which I'm not going to go into in this show. I actually did a blog post on it over on DecideStartSucceed.com. But about why I can't work for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to get to that realization. And once I did get there, I decided I'm not looking back. Like I'm gonna make this work. I don't care what I gotta do because it just, the longer you don't work for someone else, the harder it is to go back, I think in a lot of ways, um, because you get set in this idea of being able to, you know, do it the way you wanna do it. Mm -hmm. But for many of you, I know you're selling part-time, You're it's a hobby, maybe you're making a few extra bucks, but there's still some reason you did it. There's still some reason you chose eBay. There's some reason you're selling what you're selling. You've come up with all these reasons. Mm -hmm. And maybe those reasons aren't playing out the way you thought. And you thought that maybe, you know, maybe they're somewhat different. But ultimately, you have to figure out what your why is and are you still acting on it? Because if if you have a, a rough month on eBay, however you want to define that, or your family situation is difficult and it's impacting other things in your eBay business and what have you, maybe your why is not that strong because the people who make it in this business or who really make it far, and I don't even mean to be full time, but just continue. Like they keep getting re-energized by the process. They keep getting re-energized by the opportunity, by maybe being able to diversify their efforts. The results are great, but you don't get the results until you do those other things. And you won't do those other things if you don't have a why driving you to do them. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just that simple, you know, driving the, the, the Ferrari is amazing, but if you don't have somebody to build the Ferrari, you can't, there is no Ferrari. Um, so you got, that's, it's, and you got to have a desire to build it in the first place. And this is just like that. You have to have a desire to keep doing it, to keep pushing forward, to find passion and energy from it. Um, to find your, you know, to keep refining your why every day. Sure. I think because I drive by a place that is close to this warehouse where I used to work. And every day I drive by it, I think, I am so glad I'm not there. And so do you, ironically. And, and we both think we are so glad we are not still there. That why gets pushed in our face every single day. I don't know if you even thought about it till just now. 
Well, without saying too much, at one point in the road, we're getting it from both sides. Yep, it, yeah. it really is, which is kind of funny. <laughs> but you know, can can you weather the down times in between the top, the up times? And the only way you're going to do that is if your why is strong. Like that, that's it. Because the down times are going to come, and they're going to beat you down, and you're going to feel, you know, disillusioned, and you're going to you're going to feel like, you know, you're at your wits end. And that's when you re-energize yourself with that why. It's like, but you know what? This is why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm going to keep pushing forward. That's really all it is. Mm -hmm. It's really all it is. Well, because this this e-commerce thing, it's a game for sure. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, we, have to, we have to commit to play. And we have to, I think that some people uh, are even energized by the challenge of, doing it and doing it well like that's that's motivation for me right there like it it drives him crazy but i am like i care somebody on facebook group too when we were talking about packaging it up pretty and taping it and all this like the presentation is just as important to me like i will <laughs> i'm not I, about that that's not my why that is part of her why no <laughs> um, but I want to like whatever i do maybe it's the only child in me i'm an overachiever from early on and I want it to be, not only do I want to sell my things before other people sell their things, um, but I want to do it and I want to do it well. So when I send something, I packed some um, roller skates today. And if I do say so myself, did a Mac daddy job of said roller skate yes, packing. You did. Um, and I put my little thank you stickers. This was quite a high dollar sale. So I put stickers on the outside of the box too. I'm just saying. Oh. So I went the extra mile and, That's I, very loud. Sorry. <laughs> and I put thank yous on the um, packing slip and the uh, outside of the box. Pew, pew. So there you go. Yeah. And good use. Good says, I, like when I see people's whole day ruined because of a flat tire, when you should laugh on it and move on. And here's what's interesting mm -hmm. about that comment. Good use. Goods. Their whole day is not ruined because of the flat tire. That was the proverbial straw. Yeah. It's all these other things that have built up inside them that are just there, right? at the surface, just waiting to explode. And I feel like there's people who sell on eBay like that. Like they're just waiting for this one little thing to go wrong so they can justify all the venom they're about to spew out into the universe. Oh, that's a good point. And you know, that's your right to do that. But I often ask myself, why do these people feel like, do they really do that and say they feel better? Like all those issues are still there. They didn't go anywhere because you, spoke about them and you ranted about them and you let everyone around you feel your anger mm -hmm. and all you probably did is just made those people unhappy and on edge and on egg eggshells like they're like man what is wrong with this person whether it be over the internet or in person or whatever so it just doesn't really do anything when you do that it doesn't solve any issue where in the world are you going oh she's gonna grab her box i think so um but i hope that you guys got something out of those you know like those reasons as well as like some of the reasons maybe why, you know, you think you're having a bad month, but most bad months aren't that bad. And most good months aren't that good. You have to have some balance. So anyway, show what you're going to show here, Trixie. That's my, that's my skates. All nine pounds. Of, oh, I did it. And we use the new, this is the new, um, boot box, right? The eBay box mm -hmm. that we just got. Yep. Um, and I love it. And what I love most about how I package this beautiful specimen is that look, you can't hear it. That's great. You get, I mean, they're, they're heavy too. It's like nine pounds, right? Yeah. <laughs> She's just going to stay here with mm. her, her skate box. It's like a workout. And I'm all sweaty now. <laughs> it's like 10 feet away. Here, you hold it. It's heavy. Whatever, you're just being a guy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, but thank you guys uh, for sticking with us through that. Um, I hope you appreciate it. We we got a couple other things, I guess, to talk about before we go, right? Rugby update. We won, and we are number one. Woo woo! So we go <laughs> into the playoffs. We are undefeated, and we host uh, playoff the first semis uh, at our school on Saturday. And I'm so psyched. Um, and I feel for our boys because uh, it was rough. We played a team that does not really share the rugby culture, and it was kind of like I shouldn't say that. It was rough. They broke a lot of rules and got away with a lot of things. I don't want to give like this big rugby lesson. Um, but our boys held their composure. Like, I don't know yep, how many of y'all have teenage <clears throat> boys, but when it comes to sports, football, um, 
rugby. I don't know if it's all of the sports because I don't, I only have experience with a couple, um, but there's a lot of bravado. There's a lot of hormones. There's a lot of, and there was a lot of it on Friday. And we had um, one fella got a tooth knocked out. Um, another guy got this scratch all the way down his neck. Um, another guy uh, had a concussion. Another guy had a broken nose. Like it was more a brawl. It was more like prison ball, honestly, than it was rugby. Um, but I was very, 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 very proud of our team for maintaining for the most part, their composure. And obviously I'm like a little kid. I'm so proud and excited for what will be. We have semis and then we go to the state championships and we're first seed. So there you go. Yep. That's pretty cool. So we'll see how they do. Um, one other thing too, I wanted to share with you guys is Yesterday, I guess it was, uh, we, so Karin and I have weird sleeping patterns oh. and I don't mean weird <laughs> in the sense that, I mean, we obviously sleep, you know what I mean? Well, I know where you're going to go with this and people are like, where are you going with this prop? <laughs> well, uh, here's where I'm going with it. So we have a room that has a pretty big light on it and we don't, or not a light, has a pretty big window on it and we, it's not easy to block out the sun. So sometimes the sun comes in. The birds start chirping about 4.35 a.m. a lot of mornings. Um, we have some sort of animal in our attic that we need to get rid of um, that's causing probably a squirrel. And we uh, have trouble keeping the upstairs cooler than the downstairs because of the way the house is built and insulated. Oh, and one more thing. Um, God love him. So this is my lemonade. At least he's waking up in the morning. Um, but Ben's alarms start going off at 530. He doesn't actually get up and out of bed until right. 650. Right. Yeah. So we literally listen to and it makes oh, it makes him crazy. I was like, dude, <laughs> but set we, your alarm for when you're waking up, not when you wish. you. And he's up. got it in one of those little eye homes. So it's even magnified. Right. So we're getting. So it's yeah. Loud. But anyway, what I'm getting to with this is that, because we're getting near the end, so um, what I'm getting hey, to with this is up. that we decided to um, download one of these apps that has, you know, soothing sounds and whatever. But what it, we really wanted to get was one of the ones that had like the white noise or the one we listened to last night, which was brown noise. So they have these different ones that take out different frequencies. And I guess the noise is really best described as like, every noise along a frequency of Hertz all at once. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it's like you, it's kind of unintelligible, right? And it sounds crazy, but last night we played uh, one of those through the whole night um, beside in, in the bedroom so we could hear it. And um, you haven't, you didn't really see a difference, but I actually got a really good night's sleep. And that's all that matters. No, wait, <laughs> you need to give a little time. Like you're very, you're 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 very skeptical of these things. I'm skeptical of all the things, but true. Be truthful. Like, how long have I been suggesting a white nor a white noise machine to you? You have. Oh well, we tried the other one, but it wasn't. It didn't have white noise. I don't think. No. How how long have I been saying we need to get one of those white noise things? Like years. Like it's no joke. And six hundred and forty three days, twenty two hours. I knew that it would be good for like you. I, like I know. The, and, the time. and you put the app on the iPad. So the sound is I better. I had to the come to it in my loud. own time. Yes. Boys will be boys. But anyway, so I got a really good <laughs> night's sleep. And the reason I'm bringing it up guys is I know probably a lot of you out there have issues with sleeping. Mm -hmm. I actually just sent a link to it to uh, Casey rockstar flipper because he, he always talks about always wanting to stay up at night, but I don't think he really wants to stay up at night. He just is up and he has trouble sleeping. And I don't know if it'll help or not. But my reason for saying all this is that if you're not sleeping well at night, there's no way you're going to be as productive, as energetic, as focused at your business the next day. And you're likely giving yourself potentially some pretty dangerous mm -hmm. health conditions that could develop um, because of lack of sleep. So I would almost say that, you know, looking at it, if, if sleep is not right, in my world, nothing else will be right. Like I, I get to a point I cannot function if I don't have enough. And I've had that a few times in my life. So whatever you do, guys, if you're not sleeping well out there, try one of these free apps that are out there. You know, try the noise apps that can sort of, it drowns out some of the other noises in the room, which is the benefit to it. Because, I, because your brain, your ears keep hearing even when you're asleep. 
So they're trying to process the info coming into them. So it's nice to kind of make it just one unintelligible sound that won't keep you awake. I just made up a word for you. So you know how hungry <clears throat> and angry is hangry? Maybe we'll make you slangry if you don't get enough sleep. Slangry. Slangry. If you're not getting sleep, you're not going to be as good in your business as you could be. There's no way. I mean, and every, I, I know people say, oh, I only sleep this many hours a night. And I'm kind of always really skeptical of that because I feel like a lot of those people nap during the day or they're not as productive as they could be, even if they did like that. And you're, man, you're wrecking your health. Well, you like have you're to, wrecking your health. That's a whole nother element to balance, right? You have to drink enough water. <clears throat> you have to eat the right food. You have to get enough sleep. And here's some more science. Um, we don't ever really catch up on it. Like it's, the no, big, it's one no, of the big lies that we tell ourselves is that, oh, I'll just catch up over the weekend. And, you know, maybe psychologically that works mm -mm. a little bit, but really, yeah, it doesn't. That's like basically what happens in that situation is you ran a race all week at maybe 70% capacity. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the weekend you're at a hundred percent, but it's not like now all of a sudden for the next week, you've got this bank of sleep built up. It doesn't work that way. Like your body has to rest. Welcome to the Prof Sales channel where we drop reseller health tips on the daily. Adam says you need four things, food, water, air, and sleep. Everything else is negotiable. Yeah. Yeah. I would kind of agree with that. I think you need love too, Adam. Like love conquers all. Well, you can love to sleep. But you can't live on love, I guess. So, yeah. If, I mean, if you get all that other important stuff, necessary stuff to exist and respirate, um, then you can. Because if you don't have love. those four things, it's going to be hard to love. This is true. Because you're not going to be a happy camper. <laughs> all right. So, this is where it starts to fall apart. Yeah. Yep. Off so the rails for remember sure. Remember to share the things. Uh, don't miss our next show because it's going to be a little different and a little, uh, I just can't wait. I, I can't oh even God. tell you, but we're going to do something really fun on Wednesday. So, and it's the first time we've ever done it. So yep. it could be a first and, and a last. It'll be a debacle. I mean, amazing. <laughs> All right, guys. So as she said, thank you so much for joining today. Share the video. It's right below share. the video player. Um, share this. It creates Gypsies, a link. Gypsies, tramps, and thieves. That's share too, right? Yeah. All right. So as, as always, this is Just Ask Karen. <laughs> and Prof Sales. Saying good, good sales, sales to you. you.